Did you realize that 22 states have policies that require that employers pay their employees if they need to vote on election day? No, I'm not saying if they have to vote. Everybody should be voting. Everybody should be voting. Let me start over. If they have to vote while during work hours, I I didn't realize there were 22. That's that's a lot. You're listening to the Human Resource. My name is Pandy. We are coming to you from Cincinnati, Ohio, from the ICRC TV t- uh, cable station. I had no idea that there were 22 states with policies, and I'm wondering how many of you do. Now we've talked about this a number of times. If you have remote workers. You have to abide by the laws of that particular residence, that particular state of residence. Have you looked up the voting requirements, the voting leave requirements, I should say, for those states? Alaska, Arizona, California, Colorado, the District of Columbia, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Maryland, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, Nevada, New York, Oklahoma, oh, Puerto Rico, well, it's not really a state, Uh, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, West Virginia, and Wyoming. If you've got employees in those states, you need to be aware of when you might be required to give them paid time to leave the workplace and go vote. Now, the reason I'm kind of clarifying that is that each one of these states have an eligibility and then they have a notice and a benefit. Now, break this down. Eligibility for Arizona. Employees who will not have at least three consecutive hours outside of work during election hours to vote. Those are the individuals that can leave the workplace and go vote on paid time of up to three hours. Now, I'm thinking of the individuals who work 12-hour shifts. There's a good chance that that individual, because they have that travel time to get to work, they've got that travel time after work, there's a good chance they're going to miss the polling hours. So an employer in Arizona with someone under those work conditions would have to pay for them to go vote. Now, they have to provide prior notice to election day so the employer can specify the hours for that leave. I mean, especially if he's got multiple employees who are all dealing with the same situation. But Texas, on the other hand, the benefit is unspecified. Employees who do not have two consecutive hours outside of work while the polls are open to vote are eligible. They don't have to give any specific notice And there's no limit. It says benefit unspecified. Ladies and gentlemen, this is this is one of those examples where we want to make sure that the employees get the the rights, the benefits, the 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 um, things that are available to them. But at the same time, you've got to be able to keep up with this because this can affect your business from not only a budget perspective but just a staffing perspective. So as we see election day coming up, and as we know that we want everyone to vote, that is their God-given right here in this country, be thinking about scheduling or at least identifying who those individuals might be and making the appropriate accommodations. State voting leave right requirements. This was actually, if you want this list, please give me a call. I will be more than happy to give it to you. Um, it's, um, I don't know that it's public. I, I, I couldn't find it on the internet myself, but there might be some other resources, but feel free. Send me an email. I'll be more than happy to uh, make sure you get a copy. And if you have any other questions about what you can or cannot do with the election coming up, Let me know. We'll make it a topic on the show.
here at the Human Resource 